As long as there's been house music, there's been piano house. And the sounds that we're going to be creating today come from the origins of house music. Hey guys, Delby here, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got an awesome video and we're gonna be looking at some piano house, some classic piano house. This kind of thing is super popular right now, kind of has been for years. Artists and labels that come to mind are MK, Gorgon City, Sunny Federa, Tool Room Records, Solo Toco, Realm, that type of thing. The project download for this video includes a special rack that I've made where I've multi-sampled the most classic, iconic house piano. I've played every note and sampled every note so when you press C3, it plays C3 on this iconic instrument. So you can download that to get this classic house sound. Just follow the link in the description. Now let's make some house music. All right guys, so here we are inside Ableton and this is the project that I've put together for some funky piano house. So let's have a quick listen to the beat and then I'll walk you through the elements and especially the piano, that's gonna be the main focus. So there you go, funky piano, funky bass, driving beat, and a sexy vocal. <laughs> so what I'll do is quickly walk you through the drums and the other elements, and then we'll get to the piano, as that's the main focus. The tempo is 125, which is pretty normal for this kind of music. Somewhere between 123 and 126, I'd say. So the kick is made up of two channels. It sounds like this. We've got a sub kick. And I felt like that just needed a little extra something to cut through the mix. So I've added this top kick. The top kick has a bit more of an aggressive attack and it really helps the kick to punch through the mix. So in the clap, we've got a clap low and clap high. They sound like this. You also notice on clap low, it has a bit more of a drawn out attack. Clap high has a bit more of a sharp, snappy attack. So in the midi of clap high, I've actually pulled it forward off the kick a little bit. So that really helps the claps feel big and punchy in the mix and like really like a main feature of the beat. I'll show you with the kick. So clap low has a few extra hits kind of creating a groove and I've just got them going through a little bit of reverb, my old favorite Dilby clap plate from Slate Digital Verb Suite Classics. Now onto the hats, I've got an open hat. Nice solid punchy sound, not too short, not too long. Sounds really good with the other elements. Really nice driving house groove there. I've got a closed hat here doing a 16th note pattern, which has some velocity variation, and that's just kind of helping add a bit of intensity and a bit of pace to the, to the beat. You can see with that closed hat, it starts to get a bit more skippy and adds like a lot of energy. Then I've got a top loop here, On the top loop, I've used a compressor to control the dynamics a bit. And then I'm using an EQ to cut out any sub frequencies and to tame the highs a bit. The top loop is really to sit in the background and just kind of add a bit of a texture and a bed to the drums. I'll play it without and then I'll add the top loop in and you'll see what I mean. It's very subtle. So with the top loop, yeah, it's really just there to kind of add a bit more atmosphere and thicken up the drums. It's not a main feature. And I think this is one of the best ways to use loops. Make a really solid foundation of your groove and then add in loops to just kind of augment and add a little something in the background. So onto the percussion, I've got this bongo. And that's just been tuned to be in the key of the track. And then I've got this snare fill. So it's just playing a little fill every second bar and then a larger fill at the end of the eight bar loop. Mm -hmm. 
And I've got a bit of ping pong delay to just kind of help make that feel a bit more atmospheric and kind of sit in the groove. So all of the drums and the kick Now let's take a quick look at the bass. Cool pattern, it's based on the MIDI of the piano. This is the synthesis. It's a wavetable, we've got a sub oscillator, then we've got a main oscillator which has got a sawtooth which has been FM'd a little bit, 10%. We've got a second oscillator which is tuned up seven semitones from the first oscillator. It's a little bit quieter and that's got a little bit of FM, 3%. The amp envelope has a bit of sustain so that some of the longer notes will carry on, but the filter is quite tight and we're using envelope two to modulate the filter and that's just still giving it this kind of plucky start to the, to the bass. I've got a little bit of reverb, a very little bit of ping pong delay and a bit of saturation just to kind of help sit that in the mix and give it a bit of atmosphere. And then I'm using a glue compressor to control the dynamics and an LFO tool just to sidechain it to the kick. So with the drums, it sounds like this. Solid driving bass line. Now I've got a vocal, just a kind of poppy one from a sample pack. Baby, baby, don't you need... I'm sending that to some reverb and some dotted eighth ping pong. And then on the processing, I've just cut out any subs. I've got a glue compressor to control any dynamics. I'm using the warm up highs preset on saturator just to add in some extra harmonics, thicken it up a bit. I'm using the new chorus ensemble, which is just doubling up the vocal and thickening it up a bit. And then I've got a little bit of LFO tool, which I've taken the depth down to 66%. And this is just helping it to sit in the groove. So the vocal really feels like it's supposed to be in the track. And on the effects, we've got quite a bit going on. I've got a crash here. I've got a reverb clap. And that plays just before the drop to kind of create a bit of anticipation. I've got a white noise sweep. I've got a white noise downlifter. And I've got an LFO tool on that just to kind of help that create that pumping effect. And I've got a reverse cymbal just before the drop. All of the samples and drums in this project are from my sample pack, Underground Shades of House. There's a link up here <laughs> yeah, if you want to go grab it. Now onto the main event. We got a string sample, absolute must have. I think it might be illegal to make a house track without one of these. And then we've got the piano. Absolute classic vibes on this. And I'm just sending that to a bit of reverb and a bit of saturation just to help it sit in the mix. But what's going on here? We've got a simple MIDI pattern and we've got a chord device which is turning that MIDI pattern into a chord pattern. So that's adding on the third and the seventh and that is creating a minor triad. Then I'm adding on the root note 12 semitones below and 24 semitones below. That's just really thickening up the sound. Now this sound is coming from my new house piano rack and that's going to be included in the download of this project. So if you want to go and grab that, there's a link in the description. What I've done to create this is taken the most iconic house piano synth and I've multi-sampled every note from the keyboard. I've played and recorded every note over five octaves I believe. Then I put them into an Ableton sampler and mapped them up with the corresponding keys. So when you press C3 it's like playing C3 on the original instrument. So if I turn off this chord device, when I play on the MIDI keyboard here, you'll hear the full range. Then what I've done is add in some effects and some processing, but made it really easy with these macros on the front. So I've got a filter with some high cut and you can set the resonance here. When you turn the filter all the way up, it actually turns off the filter so it's not affecting the sound at all.
Then I've got some reverb. I've got a dotted eighth note delay and an eighth note delay, so you can choose whichever works best for your track. And the feedback for both of those delays is controlled with this feedback knob. Then I've got a drive, which is just adding some saturation. Helps to thicken up the sound. And I've got a low cut, just to cut out any of the low frequencies if you don't need it in your track. Also great to automate for kind of build ups and breakdowns and that type of thing. You could kind of, you could introduce the piano like this. Now if you want to thicken up the sound on this and make it a bit more rough, you could add in some more compression. You can also add in more notes to kind of add more harmonics to the sound. So let's add in up one octave and we'll duplicate this plus seven down one octave, so that's minus five, and then it sounds like this. Now if we still want more grit and crunch, we could add in something like an overdrive. I might put that before the compressor. And we could also add on a chorus. Really cool device, really fun, and super easy to use. You just drop it in and go. So as I said, there's a link in the description if you want to grab the project which has got a copy of this in it. If you want to save it to your live devices, you just hit this save button there and it's going to copy the rack and all of the samples into your library. So you can just grab that, it's right there whenever you need a classic house piano. All right guys, hope you enjoyed that. Good vibes all around. It feels like summer's in the air even though it's minus two outside in Berlin. I hope you found that useful. This was a really fun one to make, and I'm quite proud of the instrument that I've come up with, and I know you're gonna really enjoy using that rack. Grab that, throw it in Ableton, and whenever you need that iconic sound, you're good to go. If you're looking for more house tutorials, then check out this one I did on filtered disco bass. Funky. Anyway, that's it from me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>